My family has been in the seafood industry for generations. We've been in, involved going back generations, as, as far back as one of my great granddads. Well, this, this town has always has been a seafood industry. You know? It's since back anything that relates to it, it, it back, you know, even when the town started. Yeah, most of my family has been in the uh, seafood. My grandfather and uh, my father before me was in seafood, also in a boat building. My grandpa's, one of them was Henry Seaman. He was a commercial trammel net fisherman. He raised 13 children. And my other grandfather, Daniel Lyons, he was an oyster catcher, raised his family. And that's the only two things in the seafood that they done to raise their family. But everybody else in the family have been involved in all aspects. Catching it, processing it, buying it, and selling it. The oldest one, as far as my knowledge, would be the oyster industry. The oyster industry, going back from what my dad used to tell me in the uh, late 1800s, well, middle 1800s, from based on his, his granddad's stories and his daddy's stories, on up until today, uh, was the primary moneymaker for the fishermen. If they had a good year with the oyster, then they could go freight business in the summertime or other, some other business with their boats. But it's the old story, you know, oyster on every plate. It goes back to the 1900s, early 1900s. And at one time I was doubting some of the stories I heard as a kid. And uh, I went back and said, well, what were the prices for oysters in, say, 1900? And found that the oyster price between 1900 and 1906 was higher than it was in 1944 during the Second World War. I remember when I was, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 years old that uh, we went out and we caught shrimp for nine cents a pound. Fuel was about a nickel, ice about 50 cents a bar. And I remember when shrimp broke a dollar a pound to the boat. My father's too, the seafood was mostly uh, seasonal. You had crab season, oyster season, shrimp season, and some people followed fish. And it was kind of seasonal. Oystering is something what you call a school of hard knocks. You watch your papa do it, and your papa throws you a pair of rakes, or your daddy throws you a pair of rakes. Son, i got to have some help. First of all, he throws you in a pile of oysters that hadn't been culled. He said, cull these oysters, and he shows you, don't, don't mess that oyster up. You cull all the dead shell away from him and all the spat, and you leave that marketable size oyster. Th rake all the other stuff back overboard. Now, don't concentrate on that oyster too long because you're losing time. I want these cull hatch clean. And you know, here you are, little boy, saying, you want me to cull as fast as you catching? I don't know if I can do that. Well, your play is going to be cut. If you get the more you produce, the faster you are, the more oysters you, and the more money you make. So at a young age, you learn now productivity. How can I cull faster to stay up with Papa so I can make more money, so I can go buy some more whatever I want? <laughs> you know, and if you want to learn and you want to make more money, then you will speed up. And you won't rake oysters overboard because if you rake oysters overboard, Papa don't like that. In most, it loses production. So uh, it's just like telling your kid to cut the lawn. If your kid cuts half the lawn and he cuts it all up, son, you done it wrong. You know, it's the same thing with culling oysters. Son, you got to do it right. So it'll look, you know, you cull a good oyster so when you sell them to the shop, they look good. I started oysters, well, going out with my daddy when I was, you know, eight, nine, ten. Okay. And uh, he taught me, you know, how to oyster. And then when I got up to about 15, I went on my own, on my own boat. My daddy built it. And uh, I can say, you know, he, he taught me how 
like I was telling you before on a sighting, mm -hmm. that it taught me how to do this. And everybody, you know, even all the oyster catchers, some of them could do it, the old, old timers. Mm -hmm. But you take nowadays, our oyster catcher, you know, uh, like Aber, you know, just use him for example. He never got to experience any of this. Right. And they wonder why that I know so much about Heron Bay and, and different areas. That's where I swam and played, yeah. you know. Yeah. I, uh, me and my cousin, Tom, you know, we were real close and we'd swim all up and down the bayou. Oh, really? We played down on the oyster reefs. Okay. From the time I was a little guy on up until uh, I moved away from this area in 1961. And, uh, well, when I was in school it wasn't full time, but it was how I helped pay for my education. And uh, I enjoyed it and I learned a lot. That, uh, what I learned as a commercial fisherman became the basis for my career. For myself, I'm involved in it because I'm helping someone out with the seafood industry in the early in the day. And apparently, they couldn't handle the, uh, the job, so uh, I have to take it over. Because it's just the fact that the, uh, the cost and the expenditure of the boat is so horrendous at that period of time. Uh, I have to stop in my own other business, and I stay with the seafood industry since. We'd, we'd go out shrimping, fishing, whatever. We'd come in, and we'd turn around and go right back out to play, go hook and line fishing or floundering or soft shelling. Uh, these bayous used to be full of bass and brim. That was a big part of a young boy's life, fishing, hook and line fishing. and. Uh, we didn't really have anywhere to go, so we had to entertain ourselves. It's, uh, but, uh, I don't know, it was just, uh, the bayou was, our whole life was centered around the bayou. It was work and play. It's just a good life to live. It's honest. You don't have to steal, and and you don't have a boss, and and I, I, that was that's one of the great things about it. We got some of the best oyster catchers in the world, some of the best shrimpers, some of the best net builders, some of the best fishermen. He's saying, I know, I've seen it, I know, and uh, you say, you know, it's. And there's some good ones around the world, but I said as a whole, Alabama produces some of the best. And, and I, I can take you to some people to prove it too.